Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. Recently we have made video on Indian Air Force Su-30 MKI upgrade which is also called Super Sukhoi upgrade. There are few more updates coming related to this one which we'll be discussing in today's video. The previous update will also be updated at the end of the video for the viewers who want to know what we have discussed in the previous part. As we keep calling the Super Sukhoi upgrade is going to be happening in phased manner and not in a big bang fashion. As per the reports, at present air service quality requirement for the first upgrade are being finalized with objective to upgrade indigenously as much as possible involving private players. The process is going to be quite complex, almost equivalent to the process of procuring a new fighter aircraft. The upgrade will focus first on the basic mission capabilities which includes fly-by-wire and flight controls within the country. Now the fly-by-wire is intent to improve the man and machine interface. In simple terms, it will improve the responsiveness of fighter jet based on the commands or the input of the fighter pilot. The no crash record or zero crash record of Tejas is due to its excellent fly-by-wire capability. Development of fly-by-wire flight control system requires extensive knowledge of flight control laws and expensive writing of a considerable amount of software code for the flight control computers as well as its integration with avionics and other electronic systems. Now with the experience from Tejas, this development will be done indigenously. However, the challenge will be the platform. Su-30MKI is a much bigger platform when compared to Tejas and the features completely different set of avionics. While it will not be completely new development but won't be easy at the same time. However, it will improve the safety, efficiency and maintainability of the aircraft. This upgrade will be cherry on the cake for Su-30MKI which is already known for its super maneuverability. But if you ask me that should it be the priority number one upgrade, the first preference should focus on fire control radar and the engine. Apart from fly-by-wire and flight controls, Indian Air Force is also looking for new weapons, avionics and sensors and engines. The most important ones among them is engine upgrade and of course going to be costly one but in short term not in long term. Su-30 MKI are going to be in service with Indian Air Force till 2040. The total technical life of engine of Su-30 MKI which is AL-31FP is 2000 hours. However, many articles say it is 3000 hours but in the official site of HL it is 2000 hours so we will consider that. The airframe of Su-30 MKI has a life of 6000 hours which means typically Su-30 MKI will need 6 engines in its entire lifetime. So replacing the existing AL-31 FP engine with new one might be an extra upgrade cost but in long term it will be normalized as they will eventually need to be replaced. As a part of this upgrade the existing AL-31 FP engine of Su-30 MKI is planned to be replaced by AL-41F 1S engine which is also used in Su-35 fighter jets of Russia. The new AL-4151S 1 engine generates a thrust close to 132 kN with afterburner which is 16% more than the thrust with the existing AL-31FP engine. The new engine will have service life of 4000 hours which is double of the existing engine. At the same time, mass of AL-41F 1 1S engine and dimension is same as that of AL 31 FP engine which means the engine can be easily integrated with Su-30 MKI without any additional modifications. The new AL 41 F 1S engine is also more fuel efficient which will reduce the per hour flying cost and at the same time increase the operational range of the fighter jet. The new engine will not only improve the availability of fighter jet but will also generate more power for its radar. So this was our analysis on the recent update related to Su-30 MKI upgrade. There are few more upgrades regarding which we have discussed earlier this month which we will be discussing now. If you have already seen it, you can skip that part. The most important component of a fighter jet is its fire control radar FCR. The Su-30 MKI is currently integrated with N011M BARS PESA radar having a range of 400 km for search and 200 km for tracking. 
The drawback of PSA radar is that they are vulnerable to jamming. This is the reason why Indian Air Force intends to integrate indigenously developed Uttam AASA radar with its fleet of Su-30 MKI. HL and LRD has already completed the feasibility study and findings of the same has been accepted by Indian Air Force. As per the latest report from Delhi Defence Review, the transfer of technology for the production of Uttam AAC radar is done to HL. Indian Air Force is planning to spare few Su-30 MKIs for the Uttam AAC radar upgrade which is expected to be completed in another two years timeline. Uttam AAC radar is based on gallium arsenide technology. The Su-30 MKI can accommodate approximately 1200 to 1300 transmitter and receiver TR modules. Unlike most contemporary radars, Uttam features quad TRM that is a single plank that hosts four TRMs. It allows TR modules to be more densely packed. Uttam FCR comes up with other capabilities like identification of friend or foe IFF, electronic and communication support measures, C-band line of sight, KU-band SATCOM data links etc. similar to those on an airborne early warning system. This upgrade is going to increase Su-30 MKI capabilities by many folds. The other critical updates are radar warning receiver, missile approach warning system and advanced self-protection jammer. There are many more upgrades planned but we are talking about only those which are absolutely necessary and on which some progress has been made. The existing Su-30 MKI fleet are equipped with a dare developed Tarang Mark II radar warning receiver. DARE has now developed all digital RWR named Dhruti for Su-30 MKI fleet which is based on its experience of D-29 RWR developed for MiG-29 UPG fleet. Back in August 2021, it was reported that Indian Air Force is going ahead with Rs 1000 crore project for upgrade of RWR for the fleet of 125 Su-30 MKIs. RWRs enable to detect radar from other aircraft and missiles that have active guidance. Across the airframe of a fighter jet, you can see antennas that are placed to alert the pilot in case if its fighter jet is being painted or located by adversary's fire control radar. If you analyze the aircraft losses due to enemy's actions since 1960s, the data shows that at least 70% of all losses were attributed to passive heat seeking that is infrared guided missiles. The RWR will not alert against an IR guided missile. This is where missile approach warning system MAWS comes to rescue. DRDO has already developed the indigenous dual color MAWS, a similar technology which is used in F-35s and its integration with su MKI is also in progress. The next upgrade which we will be discussing is self-protection jammer pod. The Su-30 MKI fleets were originally equipped with Russian SAP-518 pods which were later replaced due to poor performance with Israeli Elta el l airborne self-protection jammer pods. DARE has also developed high-band jammer HBJ pod which began its trial in 2019 and also integrated with Su-30 MKI. DRDO is now working on a much advanced ASPJ that is Advanced Self Protection Jammer which will feature gallium nitride based solid state AESA jammer transmitter along with digital radio frequency memory DRFM. The DRFM based jammers are known for severely degrading the adversary's radar and missile seekers. The integration of ASPJ with Su-30 MKI is going to greatly boost Su-30 MKI's electronic warfare capability on par with the current generation fighter jets. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.